In today's video, we will see by using Docker Compose tool how we are going to create containers for Spring Boot application and PostgreSQL database by using single command called Docker Compose up. And by the way, this is the second video related to Docker. And in the first video, I had told you how to Dockerize test app Spring Boot application and PostgreSQL database by running two different Docker run commands. We will also do the same thing for these two applications but this time we will use docker compose tool and by using single docker compose run command we will start multiple containers for test app application and postgresql database also we will do the volume mount and we will see how this thing's going to work in the part one video i actually used this uh, postgresql image so I executed this docker pull postgres command in my command line to pull the postgres image to my local system. So basically this is already added to my local system. Let me execute uh, docker images command and you can see the latest postgres image is already available. And also last time I created a docker file under this test app Spring Boot application root directory. And here you can see I'm using JDK 17 image and also I'm exposing this application to 8089 port and the same port has been configured in application properties under server.port. So I'll make use of this Postgres image and the Docker file which is available already. So let's quickly create a Docker Compose file under the project root which will be docker-compose.yaml. All right, so you have to mention the version uh, at the very first step and followed by you have to mention services. And one more thing, if you won't define the version, then latest version will be taken. So we can uh, delete the version step and we will directly start from the services. And basically the containers that are going to be created by Docker Compose are treated as individual services. So we will configure two services, one for test app Spring Boot application, another one is for the database under the services section. I'll start from the database configuration first. So I'll give the service name as DB first. You can mention any XYZ name. There is no compulsion that you have to put DB. And another one is backend for Spring Boot application. Now first important configuration is ports under DB service. So ports is an array and every element in an array is prefixed with hyphen based on the yaml syntax followed by the default port provided by postgresql which is 5432 colon 5432 and again the right hand side of the colon defines the port mapped with the postgresql container whereas left hand side port 5432 is exposed to outside so that you can connect your Spring Boot application with this database under the left hand side 5432 port. And then you can give the container name which is PostgreSQL container. Since we already have a Postgres image in our local so we will use that Postgres image uh, to configure in our Docker Compose YAML. For that we have a property called image and then you mention the Postgres image name which is Postgres this is important step now next step is environment for that you have to add environment object the environment object can be treated treated as an object or can be treated as an array so if you treat it as an array then you have to mention individual element prefixed by hyphen all right so the first element or the first property under this environment will be postgres underscore db equal to my db2 then postgres underscore password i'll give it admin2 then postgres underscore user also equal to admin2 so all right so these are the environment variables we need to add and by the way these environment variables are not randomly added to see the exact environment variables first go to docker hub and go to this postgres image section and and scroll down to the environment variables part and here you can see the postgres password user and db so this can this exactly same environment variables i have configured in the docker have been composed yaml file as well 
Now here comes the very important step called volumes. This volume mapping is very important and as I have already told you this volume mapping is needed because when you are shutting down this PostgreSQL container and when you are restarting the container again you should not lose your progress or you should not lose the schema related changes. For example when you are performing CROD operations by Hibernate JPA into this PostgreSQL database and for some reason if you have to shut it down and you have to restart the PostgreSQL container then you should not lose your inserted records or you should not lose the schema related changes you have performed. So this volume mapping will be treated as a backup. So what we are going to do in this step is we are going to map our local directory or we will create a new folder in our C or D drive and we will map the directory to the persistent storage provided by docker to this PostgreSQL database while running in the docker container. And let me quickly show you how. So the first two step would be going to the docker hub again and search for volumes. And come to this part. There is a hyphen V followed by some command right. Only copy this portion and paste this property under volumes as a first element. And you can see the right hand side of this column represents the persistent storage provided by docker to this PostgreSQL database where the data is the persistent storage directory and left hand side of the colon will should be the local directory. So I already have created an empty folder called postgres underscore data part under the C drive. So I'll copy the directory path and replace the entire left hand side of the colon expression. So by doing this we have successfully did the volume mapping and one another important step and by the way the last step under this db services restart there are a bunch of options for the restart but i will configure always as a value to this restart property so by doing this we are telling this docker compose tool that hey for some reason if this postgres container didn't get created in the first attempt then try to recreate a container for this postgres as a retry attempt so there will be a fallback and retry attempt will happen by using this uh, restart always property. So let's quickly start the backend configuration. So the first thing is we do not have any image for Spring Boot application. But rather we are going to create an image for this uh, test app application by using the docker file. So we are going to tell this docker compose tool that hey there is a docker file already available under the test app root directory so use that to create an image for this backend application and to tell docker compose to do that we have a property called build and by the way this is an object and this object contains a property called docker file to tell exactly the name of the docker file you have to create an image for this backend application and for our case this is docker file with d capital but for the simplicity purpose I will not mention this docker file property. I'll remove that. Rather I'll put a dot so that this docker compose uh, find this docker file under the same root directory where this docker compose.yaml file is already available. So this dot represents the current directory. So as I said I don't have any image so we do not need to configure image property just like we did for the database. So we will do directly the configuration for container name which is container underscore name then ports. It's an array so the element of, the, of this array is prefixed with hyphen and our port which is configured in the application dot file which is 8089 and this is the same port we also have configured in the docker file. So now the next thing is environment configuration. Now again in your application properties file if you have externalized the database connection properties such as uh, the database URL, username and password so that you can get those properties from the environment variable then only you have to configure this environment part in the docker-compose.yaml. So the first property is dv-url having value called jdbc colon postgresql colon double slash db colon 5432 and then my db2 in uppercase an important part you observe this host name 
the host name is not given as localhost or IP address. Rather, this DB is the DB service at line number two. Now the next property is DB hyphen username, which is admin two, then DB password. And then to tell this Docker Compose tool that this backend service is depending on the database service, we have a property called depends on. All right, so for our newer version, it's an array. So the first element will be the database service name, which is DB. And we will also configure restart always for this backend service. So that's it for the configuration standpoint. All right, so now let's clear out the console and we'll execute a command called Docker compose hyphen f I'll type doc and press tab button so it will be automatically fill out the docker compose.yaml name and then up and now you, you also can run these two containers in a detached mode or I should say you can run these two containers in the background so you can put hyphen d flag at the end as well but I won't put that hyphen d flag for now just because I want to show you exactly what log messages got uh, generated now hit enter now you can see just because of that build dot property we have given in the line number 15 for backend service it is trying to create an image for this spring boot application so it is trying to read the docker file from the root directory and create trying to create an image then automatically just because of the depends on property we also have configured under backend so this docker compose tool can identify which is the dependent uh, container or I should say which is the dependent service and which is the dependency service. For our case, since backend service depends on DB service, so this Docker Compose will automatically give the priority to the DB service first and it will try to create the container for the DB service and then it will come to the dependent service which is backend service. All right, so now the Spring Boot container also has started running. And it took a while to start both the containers in one shot because there were some connectivity issues for the Spring Boot application. Thanks to that restart always property, this Docker Compose tool also retried again and again for the Spring Boot application to connect with the PostgreSQL database. And once the connection got established, our Spring Boot application related container also got created. Now let's quickly jump to the browser and uh, uh, go to the Swagger dashboard. I'm using Spring Fox Swagger 3. All right, so all the controller related endpoints are getting rendered here. And for a quick demonstration, I'm going to uh, insert one record for this orders to the order table. Order ID not required. Amount can be 1000. I can insert multiple records. Now we'll execute. I can see the 200 response. Now I'll quickly open the PG admin 4 to show you the newly inserted record. So first of all, you have to give the master password. Probably if you are opening this PG admin 4 for the first time, then you have to create a new master password. Now click on the servers, go to object, go to register, then register a new server. Server name can be any name. I'll give you my db2 hyphen dev and go to the connection tab under the connection name host name should be localhost followed by the port number which is 5432 as a default port which is already fine database is my db2 username is admin2 password also admin2 I'll save the password and connect And you can see this order and product tables get created by Hibernate. Now let's quickly check our newly inserted record. All right, so now right click on this orders uh, table, then go to view and edit and click on all rows. And yeah, so we can see the two newly inserted records. And let me quickly show you the two running containers by opening a new terminal here. So run command called docker ps to see the running containers. And you can see there are two running containers, one for test app container and Postgres container. And now to stop these two containers in one go, you have to use docker hyphen compose and then down. All right, so now you can see the containers 
got stopped and removed to reinitiate this continuous again you again you have to execute docker compose up command and you can see the building uh, of an image for this test app application step has been skipped because we already have created an image for this test app application so in the next docker compose up command you didn't see the step all right so this is pretty much it from this video thank you so much for watching